Welcome and good morning. I'm so glad that everyone could be here with us today. Those of us who are joining um, in the backyard in Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. For those of you, as, uh, those of you who are joining us via social media, good morning and hello. My name is Jennifer. This is a little praise band back here, um, and we're so glad that you found us today in this hot weather. Um, some a couple of announcements before we get started. Um, we have um, please download the Share Faith app. Type in the Edge Church. That will get you lyrics to all of the songs that we are singing here today, as well as sermon notes when Pastor Sewell gives his message. Um, also, it has praise music from um, songs that we have sung and posted before. Lots of great information, even the church calendar. And it will notify you when there's a church event. So it's awesome. So you don't forget. Um, other things. Today, also, if you go to our church website, there's going to be many links so that you can click on. We have many different options to watch the service. Um, so many that I almost can't even remember them all. Um, we have the Facebook. We have Twitter now. We have what? Instagram. We have a whole bunch. Of, there's some, again, just go there, check it out. It's going to be awesome. So that's Edge Church NC. Um, and, and click on that link, as well as there's donate buttons listed. Um, we are a small church, and so any great donation to help moving us forward would be as w appreciated as well. Um, if you are here with us today, we do have the basket available that you can drop your check-in off or um, your offering. That will be later in the service. But for those of you online, um, there are um, donate buttons there. There's also a church address that you could um, drop any donations there as well. Uh, there will be no youth group today, so no youth today. Um, and uh, there is book club. So the ladies have planned a book club, and I have it. It's same kind of different as me by Ron Holt. So this is what it looks like. Uh, more information will be posted. Um, it, Anne is hosting us, so thank you, Anne. We haven't quite nailed down the exact date, so just know that it's towards the end of August. So get it today. Um, it's already good. I've read the first two chapters already this morning. Anything else that I may have missed? All right. Good. Uh, let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for today. You know the little mini struggles that we have already gone through this morning, but we are not deterred. We are here to worship you, whatever that might be. Through the hiccups and all of that, Lord Jesus, we are here to worship you. We are here to know that we have sinned, we are not perfect, we are sinners in this fallen world, but that we can strive because we know that we have accepted Jesus as our Savior. He has come into our hearts and filled us with the Holy Spirit that nothing else can fill. Not stuff, not money, not ego, just the Holy Spirit to change our hearts. Let it not be of anger and of meanness, Father God, that is not of you. You are of love and kindness, mercy and grace. So we come together in whatever form our church might look like today. If it's in person, if it's online, if it's around the world, Father God, may your message be the truth that they hear today. We give this service to your glory. Amen. The first song is If We Are the Body. Crowded in worship today As she slips in Trying to fade into the faces The girls teasing laughter Is carrying farther than they know Farther than they know But if we are the body Why aren't his songs why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. There is a way. A traveler is far from home he sheds his coat and quietly 
sinks into the back row. The weight of their judgmental glances tells him that his chances are better out on the road. But if we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? Why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. Jesus begged much too high a price for us to pick and choose who should come. And we are the body of Christ. But if we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? Why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. Jesus is the way. This next song is called Miracles. Um, it's a new one, so, uh, but I think it's a good one, one that we'll continue to sing, I hope. The one who made the blind to see is moving here in front of me. Moving here in front of me, the one who made the deaf to hear is silencing my every fear, silencing my every fear. I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles. I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles, the one who does impossible, is reaching out to make me whole, reaching out to make me whole, the one who puts death in its place, his life is flowing through my veins. His life is flowing through my veins. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God.
not as smooth. We had to move some songs around today. Hold on. Yeah, we're working this out there. It's kind of cold. You'll have to bear with us. <laughs> peace. Bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding you. Let it break. Natural name still. Call the sea to still, the rage in me to still, let me wait at your name. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, the silence fear. Jesus, Jesus. Buenos días. 
How are you all doing? Let me pause for a moment, take some breath. <laughs> I've been um, working out there, you know. Um, I'm so happy to see you all again, to see you all um, on our broadcast. Uh, we are so thankful for being uh, here in this backyard. We are so thankful that God is with us. And today we will keep talking about uh, this, this sermon series that is called Can You See It? This is a sermon series that is following teaching, uh, the teachings of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Lessons that have been given to, this, to the disciples. Teachings that we might have uh, hear many times, but ones that we need to, uh, often God wants to speak to us again, maybe because we are living different circumstances. Our first week we learned how God used, uses the smallest things to do greater things and to be committed, like Jesus was committed to death for us, like in, in our uh, last week, we encountered how Jesus satisfied the spiritual hunger of a multitude, but at the same time, he provided uh, for their empty stomach. Because God is a God of provision and God of substance. Today, we will talk about the, uh, what happened right after this uh, feeding of the 5,000. Um, we'll analyze how Jesus keeps teaching us simple lessons. Of course, we are going to keep asking, uh, either if you are listening, like here on, in a backyard or in, in all the different places that we are, we are going to keep asking the same question. Can you see it? But before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Querido Dios, we are here. We want to listen to your words. We want to hear this message of life that you has, you want to give us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our lesson today comes uh, today comes from Matthew, Matthew chapter. 14, you can pull it up in your Bibles, in your apps. Uh, Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. I have the New International Version here. Not the Spanish one. Give me a second. <laughs> Verses uh, 22, it reads like this. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the, into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he has dismissed them, he went up on the mountains by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a uh, considerable, considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. While I was praying uh, to prepare this message for today, I thought to myself, what a great opportunity to talk about something like a storm. You know, Last Monday, the state of North Carolina uh, was struck by this tropical storm, Isaias. Uh, some of us lost power. Some others had their property damage uh, because of you know the strength of the wind. Many of us had a really bad night of sleep. You know, we were posting on social media. I was, I, I was, I was there with you all. I was like, yeah, like, yeah, it's kind of difficult to, to sleep. Uh, but thanks God, 
that we were prepared. Sorry, I'm it's kind of humid out here. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, thanks God we were prepared to face this storm that was coming our way. We also have these wonderful friends and family, family that we can give support if we need something. Uh, we can check in with others. We could check in with others if they were like doing well, if everyone was okay. That was my my case was a little different since this is my first time living like this close to the beach. So I didn't know exactly how to be prepared or what to do, what to expect. Yes, it might sound logical. I understand that. But at the same time, it was something strange, something new for me. I'm, thank I, I'm thankful that I was able to talk to some of you to get um, to know about the best way to be prepared for this storm that was coming. So I think I can somehow relate to of what these disciples are, are facing in this story. They have no way to know what's coming. They, they are not being negligent or imprudent because they are obedient uh, they are being obedient of Jesus' words. Jesus requested that he they get to get into the boat and go to the other side and wait for Jesus there. That was easy, wasn't it? But in doing so they encounter some trouble. The difficulties that they experience on the sea are not or their own making, but stem from their compliance with Jesus, what Jesus said. Jesus knew what was about to happen. Jesus is God incarnate, incarnate, incarnated, the creator of the universe. Of course he knows what's coming. He doesn't need technology he doesn't need a cell phone to, to know about the forecast, uh, the weather. When he sends them ahead of him, he was saying, you know, I will catch you later. I, I will meet you on the other side. In other words, you will make it to the other side, and there I will be there with you. In other words, you will be always on my side. I will, I will be watching you all the time. Now, we are, to, we are not told if the disciples wondered about what was the way that Jesus was supposed to cross across because they had the boat. Jesus didn't have one. We don't know that many details. But I feel like some of them had the, that same question on, in their heart, in their heads. And that was the beginning of their doubts. Um, they needed to, way, to obey Jesus' command, and they did. They have witnessed miracles happen. They have been present when Jesus is, was able to provide food for more than 5,000 5, people how he healed the sick, how many miracles happened before him. They, they have witnessed that. And now they have no way to be suspicious of, you know, what Jesus is asking them to do. Uh, they know that where Jesus was going to be, he was going to be, he was going to be at the top of the mountain. He was going to be able to see where they were. They were always in Jesus' sight. It is from up there that Jesus saw their struggle. 
Jesus was praying, but he also was like looking, being uh, being uh, aware of the situation that they were struggling with. Jesus saw their, they were fighting against the wind. In verse uh, 25, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Have you ever felt that your faith is too small to get through difficult situations? Perhaps have you ever felt that you are alone by yourself, struggling, trying to go through a storm in your life? Whenever I think about this moment, I, I can picture those disciples asking the same questions. Are we really going to make it to the other side? Why, why Jesus leave us by you, ourselves in this situation? As a matter of fact, it is not clear if this was a storm or just very, like, strong wind. Uh, that was... This was not the first time that these disciples are struggling in the sea. We, 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 saw, we see in Matthew chapter 4, they were in a similar situation, but Jesus is with them. Jesus is right there taking a nap while they are struggling. So they, they are afraid, they were afraid, and they went and Jesus like, Wake up, Jesus, we're in trouble. Please, help. Jesus was there for them, and they knew that they could go and ask for Jesus' help. It is like those times when your children come to your room in the middle of the night because they think that there is a monster below their beds or because they had a nightmare. Yeah, you know, children always will always reach out to their parents when they are scared. So that's what uh, these disciples did back then. But now in, in Matthew, in, in this chapter that we are talking about today, there is a problem. Jesus was not with them, was not like in the same boat. Um, Jesus said he will meet them in the other side. He never talked about coming to them by walking on waters in the middle of the night. And in that way, he will be with them. No. And then this, there is anxiety, there is stress, there is like all these things present when they see somebody or something coming, walking on the waters. They, they are not expecting for Jesus to show up. So the most logical thing, it is to assume that a ghost is walking on waters towards them. Would you think of that? Would you say, like, there is a ghost over there because... There is no other way. There is no other explanation. It is right there in that m moment of crisis, on that moment of chaos, chaos, when Jesus shows up for them. Jesus is walking towards them. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And how many times have you have we hear these words in the Bible? Many times. Can you remember? Take courage. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Abraham. I'm your shield before 
your very great reward. Joshua, have I, I not commanded you? Be strong and get courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. The angel said to the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for you and for all the people. Even in the book of Revelations, by the end of the Bible, John has a, a vision of God saying, do not be afraid. I'm the first. I'm the last. I'm the living one. I was dead, but now, look, I'm alive and ever, forever. Those are similar, those are phrases or those are like moments that we have seen in the Bible, these very same words. But in this context, for them, the great I am was present in the middle, in the middle of the struggle. It's not, it's not the same that you are, when you are reading the Bible, it's not the same just to read it, that that assurance that you have when you hear Jesus' words saying, do not be afraid. The creator of the universe is always ready to reach out for his children, no matter of the circumstances. Jesus so chose us to give them comfort, to get them to the other side. But he is also present to calm their storm, that anxiety, that stress that is overwhelming all of them and Peter. In verse 28, Lord, if it's, it, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the waters. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. In this moment, Peter is not saying, that's a ghost. Peter is recognizing Jesus' voice. The same sweet voice that he has been listening to for the past two years is present for him in this moment. The same voice that has been present in other moments. His calling on Peter now is calling on the name of the Lord. And this is important because in doing so, in recognizing and saying, Lord, he is recognizing, acknowledging Jesus' power, but also he is recognizing his own humanity. Peter recognizes that he cannot take control of this situation. Even if he was provided with a boat to get to the other side, he needed to recognize God's presence in this difficult time. So he says, Lord, if it's you, let me go and walk towards you. Even the good news here is that Jesus is there for him. He's not a ghost. This is a moment of both weakness 
and strength. Peter is there doubting, but he is also there wanting. He wants to believe. He fears about stepping out of this boat, but because this boat has been a good place for, for them until now, but he needed to have a change of perspective. And that was a good time. That was the perfect time to have a change of perspective. You know, our perspective is the result of, we, of what we are focused on. Peter is focused on, it was focused on, on, on the wind, on the torment, or on what was going on. But now he's focused on Jesus. His perspective has been changed. I don't think Peter was expecting to walk on waters. He was only recognizing who was in front of him. And that causes him to do something that he thinks he will never do. Peter stepped out of the boat because Jesus said, come. He was not standing on waters. He was standing on Jesus' words. In this story, we encounter two type of persons, both fully equipped to get to the other side. But only one of them decided to take his faith to the next level. You know, that growing faith of the size of this little mustard seed. And now he that faith makes him stand on Jesus' words and go beyond any expectations. In, in verse 30, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. And then he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached, reached out and caught him. Oh, you little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they clim climbed into the boat, the wind died down. For a moment, he was focused in Jesus' words, but when he saw the wind, he, you know, what was around him, he was focused, his focus was moved out from Jesus' words, and he began to sing. I can, I don't know if this is true, but I can picture Peter being human, you know, trying to rationalize what's going on, how is he walking on waters, perhaps he started to feel himself a little superior, just like some of us. Check this out, bro, like, I'm walking in water. His focus was not in Jesus for a second. Perhaps his focus was in his individuality, in himself, and he began to sing. The good news is that even when Peter lost focus, Jesus remained faithful. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, but Jesus never took his eyes away from, Jesus, from Peter. Jesus was there to reach out when Peter needed You and I can find ourselves in the same situation, in the same position, sinking in pr problems, thinking that God is not listening, 
because we have not seen Jesus' hand reaching out for us yet. It is not that we are being unfaithful, let me tell you. Jesus' hand is and will be there for us always in our pain, in our fears. Jesus is walking in waters to encounter you in your fear. He is there to find you in your uncertainty. He's also there in your joy and in your blessing. Jesus is always there, ready to meet you, even before you cry out for help. Jesus have, has provided us of what we need. We have this little faith of the size of the mustard seed growing up in us. If we relate this to what's going on with our community right now, you know, our context, we can, we can find ourselves in this storm. There is a storm out there, um, I understand. There is a polarized debate of whether Christians or believers need to be together, need to be open, like the church needs to be open or closed. There is a debate there. Questions are being asked of where we are being faithful during this time of chaos, chaos. And some voices can imply we are not being faithful. Maybe we, we need to change our perspectives. Maybe we need to see this moment as a new opportunity, a time to be one church, to be creative, a, a time to find new ways to be the body of Christ, present for our communities. Maybe not in the same way that we have been doing so, but to be there. Jesus has provided everything we need. Jesus has provided with doctors, with healthcare, with all the things that we know that we have for us to be strong in this time that we are facing. Jesus has provided with everything we need to cross to the other side. It is a time when living faithfully is not always meant to be an individual decision, to be right or to be wrong, to be faithful or to be hopeless. Because you know, yes, there, there are entire communities drowning there are countries, there are states that are handling this storm in different ways. I was sharing weeks ago about many faithful pastors that are, have been passing away because of this virus. It's not that they are not faithful. That's not something that I'm making up. Churches and schools and, you know, public spaces are trying to prevent this spreading of the virus. But listen carefully. God is still reaching out and taking care of us. What we need to reflect, what we need to do is to reflect on in whether we are disregarding our neighbors in whatever position we are taking. Sometimes my neighbor cannot afford to be sick or they don't have the privilege of health care to handle this storm. Sometimes my neighbor is being excluded 
as a part of the body of Christ, my neighbor is being purposely set aside by us, by the healthy ones, by the ones that are not in risk. We need to reflect that in faith, n not as an individual decision or an individual responsibility. We need to consider being faithful as a communion practice. We are the body of Christ. Whether or not we choose to take Jesus' hand, or if we choose to walk out of the boat, or if we choose to stay in the boat, because this is my secure space, the reality is that Jesus showed up for all the disciples, not only to save Peter. Whether you are prepared for the storm of not, some sometimes things are going to still go bad. But the way you respond to this crisis, to this time of chaos, will make a big difference for you and for the ones around you. Sometimes being faithful means to be incredible, uncomfortable, scared, as Peter was. When he was drowning, Jesus not only offered his hand, Jesus literally pulled him out of his drowning and walked with him to the boat. Yes, Peter, the faithful one, he was drowning. He was the one in danger. Perhaps, like Peter, we, need, we might need to change our perspective. Verse 32 And when they climb, climb into the boat, the wind die down. And then those who were in the boat worship him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Jesus pulled, pulled Peter out from drowning waters. Peter now has the assurance. He needed. Yes, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, but Jesus never took his eyes from Peter. Jesus got in that boat and stayed with all the disciples, all of them, not just with Peter. Because, you know, Jesus is not this mystic character who shows up to save people from evil and then disappears. No, that's not Jesus. Jesus does not offer help on the run. No, that's not Jesus. Jesus is the one who is going to put you out of drowning and is going to remain with you. That's Jesus. That is who Jesus is. The message of this story is not that Jesus walks on waters. The peak of the message is not that Peter is being able to do what nobody else could do. The climax of this story is that neither Peter nor anyone else in that boat were, were out of Jesus' sight. Jesus was there to save them all from that storm, from that trouble. Jesus' eyes are on you today. Jesus is reaching out today.
to pull you out of whatever circumstance is going on in your life. If that's called whatever the name you want to say, anxiety, illness, economic failure, you name it. Jesus can reach out. Jesus can reach you right there where you are, no matter the circumstances. Would you pray with me? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your hand, ready, that is ready for us to pick us up of whatever the circumstance we are. We are so thankful because even sometimes we cannot see you around. Sometimes we might think that you are out there far from us, but today you are giving us your word that you are present, that you are here, and your hand is ready for us. We are so thankful for, for that love, for that spirit, for being with us, even if we are faithful or we are not faithful enough, even if you if we are in like different circumstances, we give you thanks because you are there, God. Today I pray for for those who are struggling right now in any storm. I pray for those who are ill. I he, I pray for those who are in need of Jesus' hand to pull them out. I pray for your Holy Spirit to be there with them wherever they are listening. God, I pray for, for those who are in need right now. I pray for your Spirit to be with them present. I pray for your power to be there for them because we know that it's stronger than any storm we can face we pray for all the things that are going on in all the world God not only a virus but all the mess that is going on we pray for healing we pray for your spirit to come and meet us where we are in this place of need. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, while we're queuing up the last song and the sun has shifted a little bit on us here, um, I hope everyone's had a great week, that everyone is surviving. I know the, um, this is the weirdest name to call cohorts. I'm not sure who came up with that. Groups would have been fine. But um, A's and B's came out for school. We're still going to give it a go. So, um, you know, prayers out there for all of the logistics of how school might look. I know everyone is very anxious, um, students, kids, parents, jobs that are affected by all of this so continued prayer for that um anything else that's going on that we need to share as we're in this moment together yes extraordinary and hot but yes
but not rain, but not rain and lightning. So we will we will go with that for sure. Yes, I love Rebecca. She's always so positive. <laughs> Ned has been great. I mean, I hope everyone did go you know, in the storm that everyone came out okay with that. So, all right, the last song we're going to sing today um, together just to praise God as King of my heart. the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I See you.
this benediction today. Que la bendición del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo vayan contigo esta semana, donde quiera que tú vayas. That the blessing of the, fa the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will be with you wherever you go this week. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great week. Woo! See you next week. <laughs>